Gun games have been around for a long, long time. I can remember the old electromechanical coin ops from the 1970s, all the way up to the massive multiplayer machines of the modern era. Some of my favorites, of course, came from good old Sega. I love 1990s Laser Ghost, which combined a bunch of horror movie elements into one heck of a shooting experience. The cabinet looked super cool and it supported three players at once. It was really the first time Sega had broached the subject matter for this type of game, but it certainly wasn't the last. Years would pass and gun games would get better and better looking. Sometimes the technology would change up quite a bit with games like Rail Chase not using an actual gun at all, but the end result was still ultimately the same. The goal was to shoot down enemies and survive to tell the tale. Stuff really started getting intense right around 1992 with Sega's System 32 arcade platform. Alien 3 The Gun was a vicious ride through xenomorph infested areas. It had incredible visuals for the time that really made you feel like you were part of that universe. Another big one based on a movie was Jurassic Park. Again, the visuals were just incredible, and the feeling of surviving in that world was exactly what the arcade experience was all about. You simply couldn't get it anywhere else. In the mid-1990s, Sega doubled down on its polygon games, and the shooting genre was a big part of their library. First, it was stuff like Virtua Cop, a good, clean, wholesome experience that had no blood or gore of any kind. Even the much faster and more frenetic Gunblade New York was squeaky clean, having you gun down terrorist robots that exploded without so much as a grease spot left behind. But in 1997, something changed in a big way. Sega had AM1 make a brand new gun game with a horror theme on the Model 2 arcade board, and this time, they wouldn't hold anything back. The House of the Dead didn't just have zombies and monsters for you to blow away, it also had the blood and gore to go along with them. You could blow appendages off, shoot holes in chests, and even decapitate your foe if your aim was good enough. It had branching paths and a fairly intricate scoring system compared to other titles in the genre. So popular did it prove to be, Sega has released numerous sequels in the years since, but none were quite as special as the first. So when it was announced that a remake was being done by Megapixel Studio and Forever Entertainment, I have to admit I was pretty damn excited. That remake is finally here and Nintendo Switch owners now have access to one of Sega's most beloved franchises. The question is, how did it turn out, and is it worth the $25 it's gonna cost you? In this episode, we'll take a look at House of the Dead Remake, a title that comes with a massive amount of expectation. The story here is brief and ultimately unimportant. Dr. Kurian has gone insane and unleashed a biological hell on his fellow researchers. By the time you receive a call from your fiance Sophie, the entire research estate is infested with zombies and all sorts of horrors from your worst nightmares. As I pointed out, the original House of the Dead was a gun game, so bringing it home today meant that some things would need to be altered. This comes in the form of three control schemes. The first is a traditional crosshair on the screen that you move around with the analog stick. This is a functional but ultimately unsatisfying way to play because it's so detached from the original experience. The second method uses gyroscopic aiming that brings things closer to the feel of wielding a gun at the screen. This allows your Joy-Cons or a Pro Controller to use your movements to control the on-screen reticle. This works for the most part, aside from when things get hectic, as it's really easy to lose your sights at the corners of the screen due to gyro drift. You can reset the gyroscope so the aiming reticle is recentered on the screen. This is a limitation of the hardware and not necessarily a shortcoming specific to the game itself. The third option is a combination of the previous two. It allows gyro aiming while using the analog stick to fine tune your crosshairs if need be. This can be useful for pinpoint accuracy, but it does take some getting used to. From there, you have all kinds of quality of life improvements and additional options. You can customize the colors of your targeting reticle per player so you can see them better. You can turn on automatic reloading of your weapons. There are also online leaderboards and in-game achievements. 
and you can even change the type of scoring system you use to the original arcade and a new style created just for this remake that adds new multipliers based on your performance. Among these additional options, it's the Horde mode that bears the biggest change to the original's gameplay. This increases enemy counts at certain times dramatically and makes them harder to kill. So much so that often the camera will turn while these enemies are still around you, causing mandatory damage if you miss the group the first time through. As with the original, this supports two players, which can be done using a co-op or competitive scoring system. This is pretty self-explanatory. Competitive is basically a case of keeping the score you earned yourself. The branching paths of the original make a return here. Instances do pop up where you can choose a fork in the road, and sometimes it's forced on you if you fail a certain challenge. For instance, in the opening area, if you kill the enemy and rescue his hostage, you go through the front door. If that hostage is killed, you go through a sewer entrance below the house. Try and save as many hostages as you can. They often give you extra health. Also returning are the multiple endings and bonus items hidden around the play area. Inside the various barrels, crates, and boxes that litter the environment, you can get extra score and lives by breaking these items open and shooting them. A new feature added just for this version is the ability to buy extra continues with your score. Should you get to a point where you run out of continues, you can sacrifice score to keep playing. As you have seen thus far, the visuals have received a huge overhaul from the Model 2 original. Nothing familiar remains of the original engine. Models, textures, lighting, and every other special effect you can think of has been dialed up far beyond the original. 25 years of advancements have now made this classic resemble the more modern House of the Dead entries like Scarlet Dawn. I actually quite like this new look as it's much darker and creepier. Making your way to the house in the opening segment fills you with a sense of dread the original never could have provided. Fortunately, this graphical upgrade doesn't rip the essence away of what made it so fun to begin with. The hokey opening cinematic is still here, the voice acting is still terrible, and the environments still retain a familiar aesthetic. Moreover, I feel this upgrade has given your surroundings much more punch, more personality, and really brings out the horror element quite nicely. Of course, being a Switch game, you do have options that you should be aware of. There are two modes to play this in. The first is performance, which prioritizes frame rate and the overall smoothness of the experience. Turning performance off puts all the emphasis on the quality of the visuals, sacrificing some of your frames. There is a notable difference between these two options, especially in handheld mode, where things can get quite choppy. If you aren't plugged in, the performance mode is definitely the best way to play. But it should be noted that whether you are plugged in or not, in performance mode or not, House of the Dead Remake has some chop to its presentation. For those of you that like to play around with such, there is also a photo mode that is quite cool and lets you take some pretty vicious shots of your adventure. The remake here has a completely new soundtrack. It's a combination of the familiar and new, and most of it fits the game fairly well. I kinda miss the old tunes though and would have preferred an option that had both available. I have a few selections so you can see if this new work lives up to your high expectations. Oh, my God. 
I must compliment you. I didn't think you could make it this far. However, this is it. Let's see how good you really are. Overall, I'm fairly happy with this remake. It feels like House of the Dead, and that's what counts. The elements that made House of the Dead a premier shooter in the arcade return here, and Megapixel Studios did a fine job making it feel new yet comfortable for fans of the original. Most of your negatives here were weaknesses in the original. House of the Dead is a very short game. You'll blow through this the first time in 30 minutes or so on easy. You can up the challenge by adjusting the difficulty, but even then, buying extra continues almost assures your success on normal and even hard with just a bit of practice. The real strength of this is in its multiplayer, and frankly, it's so much stronger with a friend along. It triples the replay value instantly. Many of you may also feel that House of the Dead Remake is an ugly game at times. There are moments of blurry textures, geometry pop-in, and noticeable aliasing on objects in the environment. Add that to the performance issues I mentioned earlier, and there is some definite room for improvement. Another area of concern is the gyro-based aiming. It is not a one-to-one -one recreation of the original feel of firing a gun, and you will likely need to readjust the sensitivity to your liking and become familiar with the need to recenter the gyro frequently during gameplay. But I want to be clear that the positives far outweigh any of these issues. This plays like the arcade games of old, and if you were a fan then, nothing here should reverse that. It has new options and features, and the ability to aim like you are playing it with a gun helps immensely. There are also some really nice features like the gallery. This is both an enemy viewer and a strategy session rolled up into one. As each enemy models for you, you also get a chance to see their weak points. For those of you that assume the head is the best point of weakness on every enemy, think again. Sometimes it's the chest. Sometimes an arm. Bosses are not the only enemies in this game where knowing where to shoot them is important. If you ever hope to beat the arcade difficulty, this knowledge is invaluable. The bottom line is this. If you are a fan of gun games or any of the other House of the Dead entries, this should be right up your alley. It's a faithful trip down memory lane that's still fun and well worth taking, even if the technology behind it isn't quite the same. The House of the Dead franchise has really grown over the years. If you add in the spin-offs, there are over a dozen of them now. Rarely have any of them been truly bad games, with the vast majority being some of my favorite gun titles ever. The remake certainly takes some liberties with the source material's visuals, but manages not to lose much nostalgia in the process. It retains the multipath gameplay, the different endings, and the memorable boss encounters. There was a core fun factor to the original that is firmly still in place here, and the fact you can play it with your family or friends just makes that all the better. Add in modern conveniences like leaderboards, achievements, new scoring modes, unlockable weapons, and the frantic horde mode, and you get quite a bit for your investment. Seeing this in 2022 makes me want modern versions of the later arcade releases like House of the Dead 4 and Scarlet Dawn. Gun games still have quite a bit of that arcade magic in them, and few are as exciting and addictive as Sega's offerings. That leaves Remake here an easy recommendation. For $25 you get a classic you can play at home or on the go, and it has never had as many options as it does here. You can even pre-order physical editions if you so desire. It's true it could have looked and run a bit smoother, but hopefully with any luck, we will see ports to more powerful hardware in the future. Hopefully Sega will continue this newfound motivation of working with third parties to jumpstart old franchises. Between their consoles and their arcade machines, they have dozens of titles that deserve the same treatment. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.